Today, I'll teach you how to build a Scratch platform or engine in just five minutes. This will include the functional scripts themselves, as well as the additional popular feature of wall jumping. Without further ado, let's get right into it. To start off, you will need two sprites, a platformer and a level. You can create these two pretty easily. A simple square will do for the platformer and for the level, you can add a bunch of black boxes put together. Okay, for the level, when the green flag is clicked, go to the center and then show. Very simple stuff, the idea is to just position the level at the stage center. Now jump over to the platformer sprite. When the green flag is clicked, go to the front layer, then show, then go to a position that's vacant from the level. In my case, I'll pick x-133, y-56. Now add a forever loop and each time we're going to use a custom block. Call this platformer engine and this is critical, make sure to run without screen refresh. Add this in the loop and keep it for defining later. So far this just positions the platformer initially and runs a script that we must define. We'll go about this with three variables, xvel, yvel and time in air, all for this sprite only. To make things easier, we'll split the main block into two. Call the first one X engine with an input of xvel again running without screen refresh, and the second one, Y engine with an input of Y well, running without screen refresh. Clean up the scripts and force the X engine. Change X by X well, then repeat until not touching level. If X well is negative, change X by one, otherwise change X by negative one. That's it. The logic is simple. Imagine a platformer at the edge of a wall. If it's moving right, the X velocity would be positive and it would move into the wall. To get it back within the boundary, we have to move the sprite in the opposite direction until it is no longer in contact with the wall. Now the Y engine. Here, change Y by Y velocity, change time in air by 1, then repeat until not touching level. In this case, we can apply the same if then else logic as before, but for the Y coordinates. Just that, in the case where we're moving up from the block, set time in air to 0. Outside this condition, set yvel to 0. The time in air variable is kind of like a timer, keeping track of how many frames the platformer has been jumping in the air. Once it hits the ground, we set it to 0. This becomes very useful both in the case of normal jumping and in the case of wall jumping. With this done, let's go over the main platformer engine. We'll first take some key inputs, just changing by xvel in either case. Feel free to customize these values to your liking. Next, we add friction, so set xvel to be xvel multiplied by 0.8. This way, xvel will slowly decrease to 0. Next, check if the absolute value of xvel is greater than 0.9, and if so, use the x engine with the x velocity as an input. Actually, this is a small mistake use the rounded value instead. This is because we'd want the platformer to stay on integer coordinate and not on fractions. Now the motion is secured for the left and right, so let's do the up arrow. If time in air is less than four, then set yvel to 11. To add gravity, check if yvel is more than negative 20. If yes, then change yvel by minus two, otherwise keep it at negative 20. This is a ceiling on the max falling down speed so that the platformer doesn't move too fast and actually fall through the platforms. Finally, use the Y engine block with YVEL as the input. And yeah, that's a platformer. For most requirements, this will be it. It's a functional script that works. But notice one thing, this does not have wall jumping. So let's add that feature in too. In the X engine, check if touching level and if up arrow is pressed. Actually, move the scripts like this and change it to an if else because in the other case, we have to set the x velocity to zero. If x well is positive, then set it to negative eight and if it's negative, set it to positive eight. Essentially, this represents a bounce off the wall. A greater value will mean that the sprite is offset greatly while a lesser value means the reverse. We're moving in the opposite direction for the same reasons that I mentioned earlier. To finish it off, set time in air to zero, so it resets and allows the player to jump once again. And that's it. This should give you a working platformer engine. 
Now, the sprite can also indulge in wall jumping. Everything after this is up to you. You can use your creativity to build any of the thousands of scratch platformers that are created every single day. With that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like if this helped you out, and until next time, peace out.